Welcome to the Rob Seco Field Ready Podcast with your host, Jim Robinson. Hello and welcome back to the Rob Seco Field Ready Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Robinson. In today's episode, we're going to talk about one characteristic that occurs in hybrid selection that is really highly sought after, but it really has zero or negligible impacts on farmer profitability in the majority of situations. It's a topic of great debate and bragging rights, especially during harvest. Which characteristic are we talking about? Corn test weight. Here to discuss corn test weight with me today is Jacob Foley, Rob Seco's product evaluation lead in Minnesota. Welcome, Jacob. Thanks for having me back, Jim. This is a great time to talk about test weight. We've got a lot of combines wrapping up or have already wrapped up. So it's a big t- it's a big topic of discussion at the coffee shop right now is test weight. So I'm glad we're having this discussion. Absolutely. It's very easily measured, measurable and it's something that's fun to talk about. So, Jacob, mm-hmm. can you first of all define what is test weight? I could, Jim. Uh, I'm going to pull a classic debate, political debate <laughs> uh, move on you and go around your question. I think first we really need to talk about what a bushel is and kind of go through why we have bushels and how they play into test weight. So, can we start there first? Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. So, we need to go back a couple hundred years and really get back to what a bushel, how it started with our, even with our ancestors across the pond into England are really the first bushel as, you know, selling a commodity kind of really happened by on a volume basis in a bushel basket. Right. So that, that bushel was uh, right at two, 2,145 cubic inches. Okay. It's mm-hmm. come forward to kind of the initial U S bushel and it, it changed a little bit. We, we added five cubic inches. So uh, the initial U S bushel was 2,150 cubic inches or 32 U S courts. Okay. So that's volume side of what a bushel used to be today in the modern U S as we all are pretty much aware corn comes in by weight, uh, soybeans and wheat all weight. So a bushel of corn is 56 pounds at 15 and a half percent moisture. Soybeans are 60 pounds to a bushel at 13% moisture. Wheat is also 60 pounds at 13.5% moisture. So we need to go through that first to kind of get to where to what test weight is. So test weight is a combination now of that being 56 pounds and the volume or a bulk, basically a bulk density. So we take that 32 U.S. quarts, we fill it with grain, and we figure out how much that grain weighs, and that tells us what our test weight is. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So, so we have kind of two different types of bushels that are that are discussed today. Farmers are paid on the modern U.S. bushel, which is defined by commodity. So, corn being at fifty-six pounds at fifteen and a half percent moisture, so they're paid on fi- per fifty-six pounds of grain. Whereas test weight is actually a measure of the volumetric bushel or the initial U.S. bushel, being the thirty-two quarts or four pecks or eight gallons or however you want to define uh, to find the the volume. So. If growers are actually paid on the total weight of grain that they're delivering to the elevator, uh, how are growers compensated for test weight? So obviously you have your number of bushels. So weight aside, you have, you have how many bushels did I just bring in? Mm-hmm. On top of that, we go into how much did those bushels weigh or what are or the volume, what the volume of all that weighs. So we have different grades, one through five. With grade one test weight being the highest, five being the lowest. So grade one starts out at 56 pounds. So if 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 your 32 U.S. courts filled to the top, weighs 56 pounds, you've got grade one corn and you have no dockage, you can even make that 58, 60, 65, whatever that weight is, and you're still at grade one, there's no premium for that. Where you start to see a change in, in your profit is when it's a very small change. If you get down to grade two or under at 54 pounds or under, depending on your contract, you might start to see a penny come off of that, uh, of that payment. So um, that uh, in, in t- typically any, anything under 51 pounds really isn't accepted into your elevators. And the, the reason behind that, I think, you know, as, as times have changed from our grandparents, great, great grandparents, so on, we we've produced, we're producing corn on a massive scale, right? storage is rather important. Um, how, how much space do we have? We need We need a lot of space. So high test weight corn stores better because you have more weight per volume. So really you're more efficient. Same with your trucking. When you're, when you're trucking in grain and you, and you've got high test weight corn, your, 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 you know, your cents per mile is, it, 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 it's, it's more efficient. It, it's way more efficient mm-hmm. on you as a, as a grower to have higher test weight corn in the truck. It's, it's, it's easier to store. It's better for a lot of those things. 
Absolutely. So, um, and, and then in storage, you know, we have less chance for high, high test weight grain to spoil, let less grain damage. It, it's just all around better for storage to have high test weight corn. Absolutely. And, you know, I may add that, um, you know, at, at, just as you said, the 62 pound corn, while the grower still compensated the same as if it was 56 pounds, the elevator or whoever's taking the contract is, is actually generally the one uh, seeing the benefit of the uh, efficiencies in storage and transportation. You know, the grower may see some benefits if he has his own uh, uh, bin or, or maybe able to pack a little bit of extra corn into the truck to take to the elevator. But most of that benefit is actually seen by the elevator or whoever the contract owner is. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, being that test wheat has minor effects or minor impacts on the actual profitability of farmers, what what are the actual factors that impact test weight? I mean, it is a lot of fun to talk about test weight. It's a fun thing to brag about if you have, you know, 63 pound corn and, you know, down the road the neighbor has you know, 54 pound corn. It's fun to, you know, think, hey, I'm doing <laughs> something right. <laughs> you know, in, in our world, Jim, when we're evaluating hybrids and looking at, at differences between hybrids and, and years and everything, it's even fun just to take a guess, at, you know, walking through trials and which, which hybrid is going to dominate test weight just from trying to get a look uh, on ear, right? That's mm-hmm. kind of fun for me anyway. But Oh, for sure. So um, that, that really comes into, I think the biggest thing is, like we just mentioned, is hybrid differences and just kind of a hybrid's tendency and its, its potential, I guess. And it comes down to the kernel itself, uh, the shape, size, rough, smooth, uh, how, how dense, how tight are those kernels going? Can, how, how tight can they be in, in, that, in your bushel, in that 32 quarts? Um, is what's the cap like? Is it smooth? Is it, is it indented heavily and, and not a whole lot of starch in that cap? What, what are some of those things that, you know, that, that, that it's all things that affect the kernel. So I think that's the biggest thing. There are things outside of that, that the growers can control themselves also. Um, some things you can't, so you can't control your environment. Anything that's going to stress your hybrid during grain fill is going to have a negative impact on your test weight. Mm-hmm. So things like not enough water, too much water. Um, how about sun radiation? Do we have do we have enough GDUs to to put on enough to put on enough of a kernel? Uh, fertility, I think, is a big one. Guys who are short on nitrogen are probably going to have a little higher test weight than others because that's a huge part of the grain fill process. Disease is another one. Uh, uh, late late season ear uh, ear rots can have a major impact on your test weight and also on the storage capabilities. That, that's going to lead to some some damage down the road as well. So that's those are smaller things. Yeah, for sure. So I mean, you, you could have the same hybrid while there's a huge tendency or a huge genetic component to the determination of test weight based on the genetics mm-hmm. involved in that hybrid. You can actually have the same hybrid in one field be 61 pounds uh, a grain and then in another field either in the same year different year but you know just slightly different conditions it could come in at 59 pounds where maybe in the same field if you have split planter situation you may have another hybrid that's 58 pounds in that first field and 56 in the second field so uh, you know there's going to be relative differences within a hybrid across environments but also you know similar relative differences between hybrids so there's a huge genetic component, but also a huge environmental and or management component that goes into this as well. And, and I think we see that this year, you know, 2019, I thought we were really short on sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think guys had a hard time getting in the field to get all of their fertility, you know, honed in and perfect. I think that really we had, we saw some pretty light test weights last year. We were stressed with too much water, not enough sun. And this year we've had ample sun, awesome GDUs. Guys were able to get in, spray weeds, got fertility done. We've just, I think we're going to have a much better year when it comes to test weight in 2020. I think you're absolutely right. A lot earlier planting dates, we're able to shade the row faster, intercept more sunlight. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, Jacob, a question that I get all the time, and I'm sure you get it too, is Mm -hmm. does test weight correlate with yield? I I hear that one a lot too, Jim. And and it's, it's less of a, does it correlate? And I I hear more statements, boy, we're going to have high yield corn this year. I can't wait to see how high the test weight gets. Mm -hmm. And I, I, there really isn't a correlation between a hybrid that has high yield and, and, and test weight. You could have a lot of things happen. You can have a high yielding hybrid with very low test weight. You could have a low test weight hybrid that's got just a ton of yield. It, it can be it can be either or. They're, they are not correlated. Mm-hmm. There are a number of studies out there that show that. We've even had our own 
that we conducted back in 2017 from our own plots. Yep. Um, it, you know, in our Western dryland, we had hybrids that were 25 bushel the acre at 25 bushel the acre. They were still test weights pushing 60 pounds. So that's a, that's a situation where we had a low yield and a very high test weight corn. It comes to back to that kernel characteristics. What do we have in, in on the ear that, that helps it have high test weight. And in that same study, we had 250 bushel corn that, that was 53 pound test weight. So, I mean, when, when you're looking at hybrids, you're doing it like your side by side, you mentioned, if, if you have a hybrid, that's, um, if both hybrids are yielding the same, but there's different grade, uh, and you've got a one cent dock on one of the hybrids. Yep. Hybrid, the hybrid with the better test weight wins. Mm-hmm. But if that, if that hybrid with the dock and test weight puts on one more bushel, you've made more money on a lighter test weight corn with, with extra bushels. So there, there are, there are definitely some, there's a, it's, it's a balancing game of getting high yield and good test weight, but you can still make a lot of money with high yield and low test weight hybrids. They're, they're, they can be just as profitable. Absolutely. Yeah. Just as you said, it, you know, on 200 bushel of ground, a one cent dock per bushel equates to $2 per acre. And mm-hmm. you, know, you really only need a uh, half a bushel, you know, uh, seven tenths of a bushel to really make up for that and, and uh, succeed. So placing the right hybrid based on the characteristics rather than the, the kernel characteristics or, or test weight ca- characteristics is much more important than worrying about test weight itself. Yeah. And if you're worried about, if, you know, if you're a guy who or a guy or gal who wants to have high test weight, do what you can, you know, mentioned earlier about some of the things that you can control, keep your fertility on point, take care of your weeds. Don't just do whatever you can to not stress out your plants and you're, and you're going to be that much better off. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I remember a study from back in the early two thousands that suggested that planting date has a impact on test weight as well. And just as you had mentioned, Jacob, that the amount of sunlight that a plant can intercept during the growing season impacts how much sugar can be transported to the kernel, and therefore earlier planting dates, as you would expect, correlate with, with higher test weight. So planting before the 1st of May tends to correlate with much higher test weight than planting in the latter half of May, uh, and that's one of the, the best ways to actually impact test weight, uh, among other things, with in terms of management. Mm-hmm. So... Jacob, basically what we've talked about here today is that the test weight, while it formerly was measured as a unit of volume, whether it was 32 U.S. quarts or back with the original Winchester bushel back in the, the 1700s, uh, 2,145 cubic inches, uh, that has since shifted to be on a commodity basis uh, based on the weight of the commodity at a specific moisture. So for corn, that's 56 pounds per bushel at 15.5% moisture. Uh, test weight, on the other hand, is the measurement of looking at that original U.S. volumetric bushel and measuring the weight of the corn used to fill that that bushel. And so it's not necessarily what the growers are actually compensated for because they're paid based on the weight of the grain they deliver to their uh, their elevator. And so you may get the sa- get paid the same for 56 pounds of a 62 pound test weight hybrid or grain versus, you know, 56 pounds of a 56 pound test weight hybrid. Now you can get dockage when you start to fall below four, uh, 54 pounds per bushel, but uh, typically that doesn't occur. And when it does occur, you're only looking about a penny per pound below the 54 pounds, which can be made up uh, with by a fraction of a bushel. Now kernel characteristics are the biggest factor in determining the, test weight of, uh, of a given uh, set of grain. So is it a smooth cap? Is it a heavily dented cap? Do the kernels pack well together? Is the density of those kernels high enough in that the starch packed well together, therefore everything else packs well together? And how was that impacted by the environment? Was there enough sugar that could be transported to the kernels themselves to make the, uh, make the, the high test weight grain? Now, there isn't a correlation between test weight and yield, you can have 60 plus pound test weight in a 25 bushel per acre field, and you can have 53, 54 pound test weight in a 250 to 300 bushel per acre yield. It all depends on on uh, the factors impacting sugars moving into the grain itself. Anything else you'd like to add, Jacob? I think that's a wrap, Jim. I think we got it covered for everybody listening. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And as always, tune in on the 1st and 15th of every month for new episodes. And until then, stay field ready. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Rob Seco Field Ready Podcast. 
Join us next time to be field ready.